Hi, so I'm standing in front of our 1960s Airstream caravan that we've just finished a, a period of renovation on. We've been installing some of the latest um, in, in lighting technology with Bluetooth control and sensors, and switches and all sorts. We're about to take it down to London in the next couple of days to go to our annual uh, marketing event at Haggerston Park in Hackney. Um, but this video is for the benefit of those of you that didn't make it along to that event or those who'd just like to know a little bit more about it. So. Um, in the next few clips I'll be telling you more. One of the reasons we've waited till now and haven't taken the, the caravan to a park event with uh, more Bluetooth stuff in it uh, up until now is that we've been waiting until we've had um, a, a true system of components that would allow uh, a lighting design installation to be done without being limited to one particular LED source manufacturer. Um, so. Throughout this uh, next set of demonstrations and, uh, uh, and, and through the tour that I'll be giving, I'll show light sources not only from Zycato but from, from Cree, from Luminous, uh, and switches and sensors from the likes of Inotion uh, and, uh, and Zycato as well. So the theory being that now it should be possible for a lighting designer uh, to have a Bluetooth controlled installation where they still have the flexibility of choice over which light sources they want to use. OK, so behind me I've got a series of bollard lights. The purpose of this demonstration is to look at the range that we can get with Bluetooth mesh. These are triggered by a, a Bluetooth uh, motion sensor, similar to this one. Actually, it's over there under the steps. And what we should be able to see is all the lights in this chain come on. And in fact, if we have clear line of sight for another several uh, hundred metres past the end of that, so we'll run along at the end and we'll see that we're still getting a, a response to the motion sensor at the very end. The other thing to say is that as the, the mesh standard comes out, we'll be able to get very fast communication between the different modules or the different nodes within a system. And in order to reduce the popcorning effect, so that there's a relaying of messages out in a mesh type format rather than just one message that has to reach all of them. So if we've got any... Uh, problems with the reception perhaps, or perhaps something's round a corner, we can get the, the, the signal sent by the, the, the control device, whether it's a switch, a sensor or whatever, to get to these other places and to reduce that, as I say, that popcorning effect. So as a, a visitor approaches the caravan, there's a sensor under the front doorstep, and what that does is turn on the entranceway lights. The range of this motion sensor is quite far, so the lights will come on on this handrail and guide visitors towards the front door. The other thing that will happen is inside the building some of the entranceway lighting can come on and also a notification will come up on the panel we've got inside to let the people inside the space know that a visitor is approaching. So just yesterday we received uh, some samples from an ocean of uh, energy harvesting uh, switches and gizmos and sensors and, and whatnot. So, this demonstration here is obviously a, a door handle that when you operate it, the action in doing so generates enough power to send a Bluetooth signal to a light. This one here you'll see has just come on. So the very act of opening your front door to your house could turn on the lights in the entranceway, just as it's done for me here. Alright, so when you come into the caravan, on the wall is a fairly conventional looking light switch, but this particular light switch is anything but. This is made by an ocean as well. It doesn't require wiring and it doesn't require power. All of the power required in order to send the Bluetooth signal from this light switch to the lights is generated in the act of pushing the button in itself. You can program these switches to do whatever you want, but we've got this set up to turn uh, some of the lights on, some of them off, and we've got a couple of scenes where we've got uh, programmed in uh, preset levels. Of course, having a, a switch like this um, will reduce on infrastructural costs because you don't need to chase in wiring to it. And uh, in addition to that, you have a bit of flexibility in terms of uh, where you can place this because literally it's a uh, adhesive backed uh, product that you can pop anywhere you like. So building on from the point I was just making about the, the light switch, um, increasing flexibility, reducing infrastructural costs. Of course, remember that with uh, a Bluetooth system, the, there is no control system either. In, in effect, the control system is embedded within all the lights, within the, the intelligence, uh, uh, the processors and all of the gubbins inside the Zakata modules. This is the inside of one. Of course, it's not just Zakata modules. 
you've got things like this, which is a uh, is effectively uh, an intelligent driver, which you can run other types of light source from. So in other videos, I've talked plenty about how lighting and sensors can be used. Uh, so I don't think I'll go into too much more detail on that here. But essentially, we've got a few light fittings focused on paintings that have both motion sensors and lux sensors that are helping build uh, a picture uh, and a lighting response for the, the conservation aspects of, of lighting in museums and galleries. Um, one thing that's a little bit different perhaps that maybe I haven't mentioned in previous videos is the back of these paintings, the hubs of the spider sensors that we're using also have temperature and humidity sensing. So it's not entirely related to the lighting response, but it's very useful uh, information for uh, the conservator in space to not only know what well, lux hours uh, the painting is seen, but also how hot it's been and how humid it's been. Uh, you could perhaps even tie that into HVAC type applications, uh, systems rather. Behind this particular painting there's another sensor actually, it's, uh, it's a lux sensor, it could equally as well be a motion sensor, but the point being to uh, look at this from a security point of view, if the painting was to be lifted off the wall, you really can see motion behind the painting, or perhaps, as we've set it up just now, more light. That can send uh, a Bluetooth uh, signal, which can be interpreted by a number of different ways. Perhaps it's a security system, or perhaps it's a warning light that comes on somewhere. And we've got that just here. We've got these spinners out, and the reason for that is so that we can talk a little bit about the camera recording uh, friendliness of the output from this, the fittings that we're using. Um, it's increasingly been becoming uh, something that's important for you know, museums and galleries, but also places of worship uh, and, and other things like that, where um, high-definition high cam camera recording uh, equipment is to be used in the space, and um, we can't uh, see visible flicker on the uh, broadcast. So, very important, uh, but the way the, uh, the modules within the fittings are, are dimmed uh, is such that we don't see camera uh, recording um, compatibility issues. And it's the same of uh, other driver uh, manufacturers that we're using as well. So the use of Bluetooth and sensors and an ocean switches and, and, and other such Bluetooth based devices doesn't have to be limited to uh, say cattle products, it can also be used in any number of other products as well. And in this case here, I've got inside here our Surf Type S tree, which we use for um, display case lighting. Now that is being uh, powered from a Zakato Intelligent Driver, which is essentially the parts from uh, a Zakato Intelligent module, but instead of driving a Zakato, it's driving other constant current light sources. So of course we've got the Osram uh, light sources in this case. Now because uh, we can do that, we can also tie this into Bluetooth installations. And inside here we've got some Bluetooth sensors that are triggered by motion. Uh, in case of uh, this particular case, Mr. Weasel um, uh, doesn't like or doesn't take too kindly to people invading his space and uh, we can create a lighting event based on that, that motion. So. Uh, that's one use, a bit silly perhaps, but um, the other thing you could do is look at the uh, Lux um, level monitoring and motion monitoring uh, and using uh, this is for conservation in the same way that you're worried about it for paintings, perhaps you're worried about it for sensitive fabrics inside a case. Here too we have a light source that isn't uh, as a cattle based, again this is uh, Osra Roslan LED but we're controlling it over the same system, using the air ocean switches, using the sensors, and uh, based on Bluetooth commands that are being sent to them. So these use a, a Bluetooth driver to control them. All right, in this drawer, we have a collection of the bits that are used to make up this system of Bluetooth parts. Uh, the drawer itself uh, is lit by some linear strip. Uh, in this case, is one of the only places in the caravan that we haven't yet got um, a Bluetooth uh, trigger to control them. In fact, this is a regular read switch, but there's no reason why, as the uh, Bluetooth mesh is released, that we can't start to see components such as that read switch coming in Bluetooth uh, to allow us to do something just like this. Anyway, to the components within it, we have a collection of parts at the back here that uh, are what make up the spider sensor, which we use behind the painting. Coin cell battery operated. We've got as a cattle module. 
we have a Zocato module with the top removed to show you what's going on inside and look at the Bluetooth radio and so on and the embedded electronics. Next along we have um, an XID which is uh, an intelligent driver which can be controlled with Bluetooth. This is what we're using to drive the constant current products in the caravan. We have an, another sensor. Uh, this has uh, a motion sensor and uh, lux sensors on it but also the capacity through additional connectors on the back to add further sensors. This one isn't battery operated, it's uh, DC powered. The same DC power, 48 volts, that we're using for the uh, intelligent drivers and of course there's a Cato modules which is pretty handy. On the end here we've got uh, an Inotion switch that I've talked about already. And in the back corner here, this is the gateway. Now this is used in a number of different ways uh, in large spaces uh, for commission setup, remote access, and uh, for getting uh, around corners, if you will, over large spaces, uh, for connecting into building management systems, and for allowing the setup of uh, touch panel user interfaces and so on. It has a, a whole number of uses. Um, essentially, that's a, a small computer that you can connect to with both uh, Wi Fi, Ethernet, and of course, the output from it is uh, Bluetooth to the light fittings. Here we have the kitchen area of our caravan, uh, where we have another Inotion switch being used on and off for the, the, all of the lighting within the space, as well as two other scenes. We've got a food preparation scene where the light levels are high in the kitchen but lower in the dining area, and we have a dining setting where the, level, the levels drop in the food preparation area but they increase uh, to a predetermined level for the dining area. So this is the dining area. Uh, in this area we've got lights that are controlled by the Inotion switch in the kitchen. We have a Zycato XIM based uh, pendant light that's controlled from that switch and underneath the benches where I'm sitting we've got our uh, interior LED channel which is a linear product. That has been controlled also by the switch and the way that's done in this particular case isn't with uh, an intelligent driver as, as such. What we're using is a 24 volt DC power supply, which is dimmable with 0 to 10 volts. And connected to that, we have a bridge component, which takes the Bluetooth signal in and converts it into a 0 to 10 volt uh, signal to the, the, the dimmable power supply. And that's how we're able to control uh, the, the LED channel, the linear product, with the same Bluetooth system uh, as everything else. So the topic of the Internet of Things uh, comes up a lot and it's talked about fairly widely but what we're looking at uh, in a couple of other areas here are applications of technology and links with other things that actually make sense in, in terms of lighting applications. So the first example I have here is uh, a fire alarm and it, when fire alarms are triggered often that requires um, a set of events or scenes to be set with uh, emergency lighting products. So if I'm to hit that, I'll turn it off because it's a bit annoying. But what you'll have noticed is that all the other lighting in the space went off and the LED channel, uh, low level linear product again, um, came on to guide people away to the exit. Yes, an alarm bell rang as well and other stuff, but this is to demonstrate that uh, using similar technologies we can think about ways to, to integrate building management systems perhaps uh, with emergency systems, with lighting systems and so on. The other thing is that uh, earlier when we were talking about conservation um, and, and the paintings and the sensors behind there, I mentioned that the, every painting behind it has a sensor that is measuring temperature and one that is measuring humidity. Both useful things, both interesting from a conservation point of view, but neither really relevant in terms of uh, creating a, a lighting response, you know. Well, perhaps if the light was very close it makes it too hot and it could turn down or something like that, but really that link is fairly tenuous. I think more in terms of conservation, uh, if the temperature is too high in the space or the humidity is too high, then wouldn't it be useful 
if that information could be used by the building management system and tied into heating and ventilation and things like that, so cool the space down or, make, or reduce the humidity. So here we've got um, a, a working fan that is uh, Bluetooth controlled. I won't start it up just now because it's a bit noisy, but uh, we have a possible uh, automatic uh, relationship that we can set up directly between painting temperature or temperature in the space and HVAC, uh, heating and ventilation. So here are some of the other components that Notion have sent us uh, along with the uh, door handle to, to use uh, in demonstrations in the caravan. We've got uh, a Notion switch that we're using elsewhere. This one uh, is a T uh, request button. It turns on a light on the butler panel down the other end of the caravan to request tea be delivered. Or beer or pizza or whatever you want to choose, who knows. Uh, they have also got a pretty cool little uh, door or window sensor. Uh, again, we've got triggering um, a light on the butler panel. Um, I guess the length of this one and lighting perhaps isn't uh, that clear, but what's more obvious is that this could be used uh, with building management systems, particularly alarm systems, I expect. This little screen, uh, I should say solar panel, um, harvests the power it needs to, to send a Bluetooth signal um, when the, the window or door is opened um, and again when it is shut. These two um, are PIR and light level sensors and again they harvest the power that they need to send the signals based on the, uh, the, the solar panels that they have on them. And these panels are a little bit bigger because as you would expect, the, the information that we're receiving from both um, PIR motion and light sensors uh, is being used more often than the likes of the, the window or door opening sensor. So with the release of the Bluetooth mesh, we're seeing companies such as uh, Zacato, Silver and Anocean come out with uh, products and services that allow the implementation of Bluetooth controlled lighting installations. Here's just three companies to start with, but we expect more to follow and other parts to be able to be bolted onto this system. Time for a beer.